Well, an easier way to get to and from the Eastern Shore. Business leaders from the Eastern Shore Chamber of Commerce gathered this morning to talk about the proposed I 10 bridge. Local 15 Stephen Quinn tells us what roadblocks may remain for a bridge that would be the highest of its kind in the U.S. The proposed I 10 bridge would stand 215 feet above water, making it the largest structure above water in the United States. But here in this gymnasium in Daphne, the question was not how big it would be, but how long it will take. For the process to get going, Michael Lee is the spokesman for the Build a Bridge campaign, and he told us that currently the Alabama Department of Transportation is waiting for an environmental impact study to be returned, something he says he expects could happen any day. When that does happen, then there, there is then a 45 day waiting period before there are public hearings on either side of the bay, and one of the fears for the Chamber of Commerce is that there could be delays if there are any shows or questions about the bridge at those public hearings. And I asked Michael, one of the other issues is going to be funding. How is this going to get paid for? 80%, he says, is supposed to come from Washington, from the federal government. And I asked him what happens if that gets stuck in red tape. We had uh, Secretary of Transportation Ray LaHood in Mobile a little over a year ago, and he told us that uh, this is a high priority at the federal level, and that if we can get past the next couple of steps to the design stage that comes after the public hearings, um, that their staff and at the federal level will assist us in putting the funding packages together. Another fear for proponents of this bill would be a potential backlash from environmental groups about the impact a bridge and its construction would have. Michael told me that the bigger issue would be not building the bridge and having vehicles continue to be backed up along the Bayway and Causeway. For now, reporting in Daphne, Stephen Quinn, Local 15 News.